last time we talked about a measure of central tendency, which was media. And for example, if you had these numbers, one, two, two, three, four, five, what would be the median? Do you remember what was the median? L equals N plus one divided by two. Yeah, so you would find the location based on that formula, uh, N plus one divided by two, and how many observations do we have? Six. Six plus one divided by two, and that gives me 3.5. So to find the median, I would go to the third observation. One, two, three. And then I have to go halfway. Notice that this gives me the third observation. And then I have to go halfway between these two. So what is the median? Three and a half. 2.5. Make your no. mind. Median is? Five. Three point five. Two point okay. five. Two point five. In the middle of two and three. So it is two point five. Two point five. Very good. Because three tells us we have to go to the third observation, and third observation is two. Then we have to go halfway between two and three. So 2.5 is the median. So that's a measure of central tendency we discussed last time. Uh, but there are other measures of central tendency. For example, mode is another measure of central tendency that we are interested in. That is the observation that is most frequently observed. What is the mode in this data set? Mode is the two. most frequently observed. So what is the most frequently observed observation? Two. two. Very good. Okay. So, so far we have two measures of central tendency. From one point of view, uh, you know, the most frequently thing that is happening is two. From another point of view, uh, the median which half of the observations are more like it's median is also central from the point of view that half of the observations are less than it and half of the observations are more than it. But there is a method of cent a measure of central tendency that people all in your lives uh, have been asking you, and that is average. Average or mean or expected value, these are synonyms, okay? Is another measure of central tendency, and uh, um, a lot of people have been interested in your average, like your parents ask you what is your average when you wanted to register in the university, they ask you what is your average. Do you know what is the importance of average? Like what is in the average that, no, why not just rely on median? What is an average that makes everybody interested in it? Average is like among everyone else. And whereas like median is just like the center point. Uh, like the, average the, would go with like every single other number. Like you would add it and then find the oh, middle. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So do you mean like it is a, like an integration of all of the numbers? Something like that. Yeah. So, but there is some specific beauty of the mean. There is a very, very important and a specific reason that we are interested in the mean. So let's discover that, okay? So I want you to give me a bunch of numbers and together we are going to discover what is that thing that is so important about the mean. So here I'm going to write different values of a variable called X. You know, variable is something that its value can change. Uh, so let's say, let's brainstorm like two, give me some numbers. It doesn't matter which numbers you choose, just go randomly. Seven. Ten. Twelve. Five. Sixteen. Okay. So 
notice that we got a bunch of random numbers and let's discover what is the, the beauty of the mean. So let's find the mean first. Mean uh, or average has a formula. How can we find the average of these numbers? Add everything up and divide. Okay, add. So don't go, let's go slowly. So um, uh, add everything up. People in mathematics, when they want to say add everything up, they use the capital letter sigma. So but, uh, to say add everything, we write sigma of x, basically add all of the values of x. And then what should we do? Divide by the number of observations. Exactly. So this is basically in a, a, you know, a symbolic form, writing that sum all and divide by count of all. So this is the formula for the mean. Okay. So, and if these numbers are all of the numbers in the population, we call it mu, but if these numbers are numbers from a sample, we call it X bar, like we discussed Y. If it is population, we use Greek letters. If it is sample, we will use uh, English letters. So um, now I want you to add these numbers, divide by the number of numbers based on this formula, and tell me what is the average. 8.4. Exactly, or you're rounding? Exactly. Okay, very good. So 8.4, and I want everybody to repeat 8.4 on your paper. I will ask you to show me your calculations. So do it, please. Okay, take a piece of paper and repeat 8.4 and you go down. Then to discover the beauty of the mean, this is the mean, okay? Now we find the deviation, D deviation from mean. This is what we call deviation, how far an observation is from mean. And I want in this column, you write down the deviation from mean. So um, how much is the deviation of two from the mean? 6.4. Uh, notice that deviation okay. from mean. So it's like your observation minus mean or your observation minus x bar and and two is less than the mean so the deviation is minus 6.4 very good and add and do that for every observation i'm done good and then i want you this is the discovery of the beauty of the mean i want you to find some of these deviations. Zero. Okay, did everybody get zero? Yes. And notice that these numbers were randomly selected. You could choose any number. And I have to tell you that it can be mathematically proven that no matter what numbers you choose, once you find the mean, some of the deviations from the mean will always be zero. zero. Okay, so let me write it down. So we just, you know, I didn't show you the proof, but by seeing that for a randomly set of numbers, it is zero, you can understand that it is always zero. So the, there is a, some attribute of this mean that median and mode they don't have. Some of the deviations from mean is always zero, okay? And that is why everybody has been so interested in mean. What is the meaning of some of the deviations is zero? So just imagine, I show you a bunch of numbers, let's say your grade. So uh, let's say these are your grades, okay? You know, that you took at different times. Okay, and then you tell me that your average is here, X bar, your average grade is here. Once you tell me that, I know that if I find this deviation and this deviation and this deviation and add all of the deviations on the positive side, notice that this is your X bar. And I find these negative deviations on the other side, 
from the mean. Notice that all of the deviations are from the mean. Now I realize that some of these deviations is always zero. And this allows us to have some beautiful, wonderful, you know, predictions. Just look at this. A student comes to my office and says, oh, Amir, I'm a very good student. I say, how come? He says, in one of my courses, I got 90. Say, okay, continue. And then he says, in my another course, I got 80. So fine, fine, fine. I ask, what is your average? And he says, my average is 60. Then he doesn't tell me about his other classes. So I say, okay, my dear, you got average of 60 and in one of your classes you got 90 and in another class you got 80. How many other courses you have taken? Then he says, I've taken two other courses. And he doesn't tell me the mark that he got from the other two courses. Are you following me? Okay. Now, then I would say, in my mind, okay, how much is the deviation of this mark from the mean? 20. Plus 20. And how much is the deviation of this mark from the mean? Plus 30. And the average, I already know. By giving me his average, I can guess what was his mark in other classes. So if in this class, in this class, if he has got 50, just I, I think to myself, maybe he has got 50, because I need negative 50 to cancel the positive 50 deviations that I have some of the deviations to the mean should be zero. And so far, I have plus 50. So in the other two classes, he must have gotten something below 60. Let's say that he has got 50 in one of them. So how much do I have here? Minus 10. So what was his mark in the other class? 20%. Yeah, because I need another minus. So either he got... 50 in the other class and failed the other class absolutely miserably. Or maybe he got 40 here. And then in the other class, he must have gotten 30. 30. Because some of the deviations from 60 should cancel the positive deviations. Or maybe he got 35 in this course. And then in the other course also got 35. So notice that by giving me his average, he's giving me a lot of information. Do you understand that? This is the beauty of the mean. The fact that we know that some of the deviations from the mean is always zero, it enables us with some limited information to understand the rest of it. And sometimes very, very precisely, look at this. Someone comes to me there and says that my marks are this is a question for you, and I will randomly choose you to answer me. He says my marks are 50, 60, 70, and 80. And he doesn't tell me the next mark. No, he says that I've taken five courses, but he doesn't tell me what is his, one of the marks. But he tells me that the average of his marks is 70. What is the mark that he didn't tell me? 90. How do we study? How do we do this uh, discovery? You, uh, you, you see what the po like 80 is positive 10. And Very good. Positive so, that. yeah. So we, we think to ourselves, okay, this is positive 10. Yes. And you see um, how much the negatives add up to and then try and balance it. Yeah, how much do they add up to? So uh, negative 30. Uh, negative 10. And how much is this one? Negative 20. Negative 20. So, so far, 
we have negative 30 plus 10, negative 20. So if the mean is 70, how much should this deviation be? 90. 20. 20. Yeah, this deviation should be plus 20. Therefore, we know that this number should be 20 more than 70. Therefore, it is 90. So it is, it is something that we will refer to a lot of time. Just remember that if there are five numbers and we know their mean, the person doesn't need to tell us what is that last number. We already know it. So in the mean, there is enough information for us to do predictions. Is that clear? Yeah. So mean is a very powerful thing because it integrates the number and gives us a measure of central tendency that some of the deviations from that central tendency is always zero. We can predict the unknowns. That's why we are more interested in the mean. That's why everybody tells you, okay, give me your average. What was your average in your school or something? Because then we have a measure of centrality that we know that you're sometimes below it, you're sometimes above it, but some of your deviations from that number is always zero. Okay? Now, although mean is such a beautiful thing, it has its own weaknesses. Now look at this uh, set of numbers. Numbers are one, two, three, four, five, and 18. And we want to express the, the centrality of these numbers, okay? Let me change, uh, let me change it to 3-3, three, three, okay? So, if we use median, what is the median? Ladies and gentlemen, this is end time we are practicing. Median, we can find the location, location of median. Where is the location of median? N plus one divided by two, six plus one divided by two, it is 3.5. So what is the median? We go to the third observation and then we have to go halfway. So now, uh, what is the median? 3.5. Very good. So median is 3.5. Okay. Is it a reasonable measure of central tendency? Our numbers are 1, 3, 3, 4, 5, 18. And uh, like the median says, the centrality is at 3.5. Is that reasonable? Yeah. Half of the observations are less than it. Half of the observations are more than it. Our numbers are mostly around between one to five. There is an 18, but yeah, that's reasonable. Now, what is the mode? Three. Mode is three. Very good. Is that reasonable? We have a bunch of numbers. One, three, three, four, five, 18. And it says the mode is three. It's a measure of centrality. Now let's find the mean. What is the mean? 5.67. 5.67, okay. And that is a number like here, right? Is this a reasonable measure of centrality? Our numbers are one, three, three, four, five, and mean ends up to be 5.6. Is it a reasonable measure of centrality? Okay. No. Five of six numbers are less than five, and mean says that the average is 5.7. Why that happened? Because mean is affected by outliers. Do you see this 18? We call 18 
an outlier. 18 is an outlier. And when in a data set we have outliers, the mean is attracted toward the outlier because all of the other numbers must cancel that, that deviation that the outlier has. You understand that? Because, because some of the deviations must become zero. The mean goes toward that outlier, so the sum of the deviations becomes zero. So mean, with all of its beauty in enabling us to do predictions, it has this ugliness that is attracted toward the outliers. Now, does it matter? Yes, a lot of times there are outliers. So, for example, look at this. You go to a country, let's say Jingulia, and the king of Jingulia says, oh, look, our country, people are so rich, the average income is $10,000. Say, so, oh, wonderful. Then you go to the city and you see everybody is, you know, dying from hunger. And you go back to the king and you say, oh, dear king, you said the average income is $10,000, but in the city, everybody is dying. Are you lying to me? The king says, no, I'm not lying. You can audit all of the papers. Okay. So what's going on in that country? Okay. In that country, this is what is happening. The people who have $1,000 per year are these many. The people who get $2,000 per year are these many. The people who get $3,000 per year are these many. So most people have very limited income, 5,000 and 6,000, and then few people have 7,000 per year. But he's telling the truth. The average income is actually 10,000. Do you know why? Because few people have 8,000, few people have 9,000, few people have 10,000, and the king himself like, has a billion dollar income. And if I want to show the billion dollar, like uh, I have to move my hand toward you know, to the other side of Vancouver to show the king. So king is here. And the people are here. Now, if we want to find the average, what should we do? I have to add the income of poor plus poor plus poor plus poor plus poor and plus all of the poor plus the income of the king. So the incomes are like this. One plus one plus one plus one plus one plus two plus two plus two. And then at the end, I have to add the income of the king. One, zero, 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 zero. And then I have to divide by N. That gives me the average. Of course, he's not telling me, he's not lying to me, but this mean is a liar itself mean is attracted to the outliers and when there is an outlier the mean ends up to be here while most of the observations are on the left side because the outlier was on the right side you know the mean goes to the right side such that the sum look at this this is a deviation deviation of the king and this is the deviation of all of the subjects of the king. So all of these negative deviations together plus the deviation of the king should become zero. Therefore mean is attracted to the outlier. Is everybody following that? So in economics, people realize that you know, those, you know, from now on in your life too, if you see somebody is reporting to you in a skewed distribution, a distribution that has outliers, if he's reporting the mean, he wants to manipulate you. The lesson for today, you read an article and it is reporting, let's say, mean income. Okay, you look at the author and say, oh, this guy wants to fool me, but I'm not going to be fooled because Amir is my teacher. So you know that if somebody reports the mean, he wants to manipulate you. Now, what would be a better measure of centrality if we have this uh, 
skewness to the right if we have outliers on the right side? Median income? The median, like the, actually economists who are true economists, they like to have the median. So what is median? Median says, don't worry about the, that one person, the king. Find the observation where half of the observations are less than it and half of the observations are more than it. So look at this median. Okay. If the uh, like half, let's say, Half of the observations are in this side, half of the observations are on that side. Now, if the income of the king goes down, does the median change? The still king is one of those people on the right side. If the income of the king goes up, does the median change? No, because he is still just one of the things that we count on the right side. So median, I write it down, and I want you to understand that median is... In insensitive, it is insensitive to outliers, while mean is sensitive to outliers. Yeah. What is the beauty of the mean? Some of the deviations from the mean from the mean is, is, always, is always zero. Therefore, if we if we don't know some of the numbers and we know their means, we can predict what they are. Yeah. Okay? What is ugly about the mean? Uh, uh, the, the, the king mean earns like one billion dollars, but other population earns like one one k or two k, so that um, mean is affected by the like outlier, which is king. The, the mean is attracted by the king because king is a very big number and it takes the mean to the right side. And then the king, when the king says the, the average income is 10K, he's telling the truth. But this is not a central tendency of the society at all. Most people are much poorer than that 10,000. Okay? What is the beauty of the median? Uh, pick a number. Um, Okay, I pick a number. So 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Christian, what is the beauty of median? Uh, the beauty of median. I don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's written in blue. Uh, where like the insistentive or to outline? Insensitive. Insensitive, sorry. <laughs> Sensitive. Well, insensitive to outliers. Outline. Why it is insensitive to outliers? Because to find the median, we have to count how many are above the median, how many are below the median. And then king is one of those who is above the median. If, he, if his income goes up or down, the median doesn't change. While mean changes. For mean, we have to add all of the numbers and divide by n. So if income of the king goes down, mean will go down. If the income of the king goes up, then the mean will go up. But median will remain the same at the same place because king is just one of the numbers above the median. Okay? So what would be the best representation? You know, notice that the topic of this chapter is descriptive statistics. What is the best description of our data? An honest researcher will report to you all of these. An honest researcher will say, the mode is 3K. The median is 4K. And the mean is 10K. If somebody reports all three measures of central tendency, you know where the peak is, you know where the median is, where the half of the people are less than it, half or more than it, and then you know the, where the deviations become zero. In the next class, uh, we will visualize when we have the three pieces together, mode, median, and mean, we can actually visualize what's going on in that society. Good. Yes, it is good. We are warming up. See you next class. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye. Okay, so we go to a society. We are an honest scientist, economist, business person. We want to present that society properly. So I tell you that the mode is 10,000, 
median is 20,000 and mean is 30,000. Okay. And these three measures of central tendency um, can enable us to have an honest visualization of what's going on in that society. Okay. Mode is 10,000. Mode is the most frequently observed. So here at 10,000, 10K, we have a maximum. And of course the income cannot be negative, so it should be something like this. And then we have 20K and 30K. And now that the mean is 30,000, where are the outliers? Are the outliers here or here? The right side. Yeah, outliers are on the right side. In other words, we know that this curve is skewed to the right because the mean is affected by the outlier. So there are some outliers here uh, that would cause the mean to shift to the right side. This is the mean according to the data that was given to us. And this is the mode according to the data that was given to us. And 20,000 is the median. So half of the observations are on this side. So look at this, half of the observations we know that are less than 20,000 and there is a maximum here. So the only way I can visualize the rest of this scale with the skewness to the right, if I want the area behind this to be the same as this area, then I have this skewness to the right. Few observations here at the high end on the right side is dragging the mean to the right side. And this area, half of the observations are less than that number. And half of the observations, including all of those big outliers, are on the right side. And this is the median. Okay. So by just having these three numbers, I'm able to have a good visualization of this data. Now, if somebody tells me a measure of dispersion, for example, if they say the family income is in the range of from zero to, let's say, uh, 400 million in a society, then I have a better version, so I'm a better understanding. So this tail goes up to 400 million, it starts from zero. So now I have, with the range, notice that this minimum and maximum will give us the range. Um, and if I, if I know the mode and median and mean, and I'm able to visualize what's going on. Good, so uh, that's the beauty of having all three measures of <clears throat> central tendency. I want to practice another one, and in this one, I want you to do it, and then I will ask you to share your version. In a class, I am again an honest reporter. I tell you that in a class, the mode of the grades is 70, median is 60, half of the students got less than 60 and half of the students got more than 60. And mo uh, and mean is 50, okay? Now that I've given, and the range, <clears throat> range was from zero, somebody got zero to, let's say 95, okay? If I give you this information, you know, without looking at the numbers, you should be able to visualize what is going on in that class. Go ahead. Tell me you are done when you are done. So what should I do to visualize? Um, I thought I thought putting on the x-axis, uh, the range. Okay, so on x-axis, it goes from zero to 95. So this would be 90. 
and then 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. Okay, so mm -hmm. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. Okay, then what should we do? Uh, well, we want to visualize the, what's going on. Because the mode is 70, we know that most people in the class got 70, so we'll start make the peak at 70. Yeah, exactly. Very good. We have a peak at 70. Then what? And then, because we know the range is 0 to 95, we can connect the, the points on that. Yeah, it cannot, it cannot go above 95, okay? Mm -hmm. And, well, the other end will um, be zero. The other end will also be zero. And then yeah. the way that it, you know, because it can go down this way or this way or this way, there are many ways that it can go down. But we know that median is 60. So this, whatever this area is, is half of the observations. Mm -hmm. So it should go down such that the area all the way to the other side is similar to that. So that gives us some limitation. So like in this side, some of all of this area should be like that yellow area. Okay. And where are the outliers? Outliers are on the left, the left. side. Like there are few students who are lazy and don't study, but majority of the students get a good mark, 70% or so. Um, half of the class gets more than 60. And now we visualize, we have a nice visualization. We know this is the range. We know where is the peak. And, you know, we see uh, very obviously that the distribution of grades in a class is different than the distribution of income in a society. Income is skewed to the, to the right or left, yeah. sorry. And grades is skewed to the oh. left. Income outliers are on the right side. Grades outliers on the left, left side. side. And that's why the mean has been attracted to the left side.